So the Carolina Panthers are about two weeks out from the NFL draft. They do not pick on day one. We already know they do have two top 40 picks at pick number 33 and 39. You've probably seen every mock draft. You've probably done a million of your own. So I want to try a different spin because news came out this week about some intel from the NFL draft for the Carolina Panthers. And Matt Miller from ESPN.com said he talked to an evaluator from the Carolina Panthers. And one thing that he heard is, and I quote, if we want to keep our jobs, we'll get him some help in reference to getting more playmakers around Bryce Young. Now, I may be a little bit skeptical about uh, David Tepper influencing and having a heavy hand, but he is what he is uh, as an owner, and he's not wrong in this standpoint. These guys need to get help for Bryce Young. After watching last year and being here and you just saying, hey, his fitter was the problem, you better get some playmakers. You should be watching from behind the scene what was going on that, okay, hey, this is where they missed up and not getting help for Bryce Young and learn that doing what you can to to get help around this guy and make him successful is the way to go to make him successful, but also make the team successful, but also keep your job. So in this video, I want to take a different spin on my mock draft. I'm going to do a five round mock draft all office. Now I know we have more holes like corner. We could use a young edge. Um, some of y'all probably want linebacker. The big parts on defense is corner and edge, in my opinion, for in the draft. However, I just want to ignore that. We've seen in the past in the Matt Rule, we did an all defensive draft. Let's have a little fun in this video and do an all offensive draft. So let's go ahead and get into my five round mock. So pick number 33, the first pick of the second round. So an offer came up to me and I had to accept this trade because I was offered a trade back opportunity to move back 13 spots from 33 to pick number 46. And I was also offered pick number 80 two along with that as well so a pick swap for a second to pick up an extra third which is a top 100 pick something that i think the panthers should do top 100 picks have more have a higher chance of having an early impact but also being some of the best players in the draft and i think this is a very top heavy draft in my opinion that being said i gave up pick number 33 i got back 46 and 82 that means my next pick and first pick of this draft is pick number 39 and i went with wide receiver xavier leggett from the university of south carolina now the breadcrumbs have been all over the place we've shown we've talked about it on this channel how much the panthers have been interested with this guy how big of a draft crush they have we talked about um bryce young's dad wanting that us the panthers receiving coach putting in uh work at uh, xavier leggett's pro day putting him through the drills this guy is 6'1", 220-something pounds, ran that 4'3-something 40-yard dash. This guy is country strong, country fast. I love Xavier Leggett. Has the opportunity to get those pop passes, those quick passes, can return kicks early on. As with the fact that we got Deontay Johnson, Xavier Leggett doesn't have to be wide receiver one. He can kind of develop a four year, but also make plays because he has a unique skill set that we don't have in our receiver core right now. I love Leggett as a building block starting off this draft with the wide receiver. So for pick number 36, the pick that I acquired in the trade, I went with center Zach Frazier from the University of West Virginia. Now, Zach Frazier is one of the top centers in this draft, probably top three overall. And this guy, he is a mauler. I like him as a size and a guy to anchor the middle of this uh offensive line going forward into the future. We know we do have Austin Corbett here, but I want to draft a starting caliber center that can come and contribute and compete early on because we know Austin Corbett is coming off back-to-back -back seasons of having knee surgery, unfortunately, and he'll be switching to a position that he hasn't played in a while. So Zach Frazier is a guy that I think can come in and push for playing time early on, if not a starting role, and anchor the middle of this line for years to come. So moving on to the third round, pick number 65, I went with running back Jonathan Brooks from the University of Texas. Now, some of you guys may be peeing on yourselves for me picking a running back this early, but this is a guy that the Panthers have already met with, and I think this is a guy that has a three-down skill set. He was very, very productive at Texas. He's coming off of an ACL injury that he had in November, but I think everything we've heard that the medicals have cleared out, he should be ready for training camp. All in all, Chuba Hubbard will be running back one going in this, into this year, but it's a contract year for Chuba Hubbard. You guys are don't pay the running back, so I went decided to draft the heir apparent, a guy that can actually be an every-down count caliber running back chuba hubbard i love him he runs hard he does what he needs to do but he needs to be in the rotation if he wants to get a deal going forward as a running back too i'm fine but jonathan brooks is a guy that you can bring along slow mix him in and some drives and some playing time as he gets his legs back underneath him but he has everything to be that one cut 
zone running back that also can catch the ball at backfield that we are looking for. Like I said, the Panthers have already met with him on a 30 visit, bringing him to Carolina to talk to him. So clearly running back is on the radar, and this guy is going to be one of those ones, and that's why I decided to go with Jonathan Brooks. I love his running style. He can make guys miss in the hole. Like I said, he's very effective in space, and he has some issues running a little bit high so that can make him more susceptible to uh, hits and injuries because as a running back, you want to kind of get behind your shoulder pads. It gives a smaller target for defenders to hit. He runs a little bit upright, so he gets hit pretty hard. He gets hit a lot, but he's a tough runner, in my opinion, and a guy that has home run hitting capability. I really like Jonathan Brooks. So the next pick was pick number 82, the other pick that I acquired in that trade, and I stayed with the University of Texas. I drafted a tight end, Jatavian Sanders, from the University of Texas. Like I said, Jatavian Sanders is three, I mean six, three around 245 i am not a huge fan of drafting him on our team because he has very similar athletic profile as tommy trimble however he's a little bit more athletic in terms of his route running capability but measurables the speed and stuff him and tommy trimble are very similar both have ability to get yards after the catch but i think jatavion's a little bit more uh, susceptible has a little bit better feet uh than tommy trimble but i do like jatavion center's ability to run the route tree and win with athleticism at the top of the routes so a little bit better route runner than tommy trimble regardless he brings a skill set and speed down the field and a guy that can be very very competitive at the catch point doesn't bring much as a blocker so he'll be more of a, a package type of guy but we have plenty of blocking tight ends on his roster let's get some guys that can catch the football and that's why i decided to go with jatavian sanders moving right along in this all offensive draft i went with at pick number 101 jermaine burton the wide receiver from the university of alabama now jermaine burton is a guy that has a background with bryce young and speed is the name of his game the funny enough this guy is super fast but he doesn't really bring a ton after the catch in terms of just create creative ability this ability to be explosive to be a game breaker but he's a very very keen and savvy route runner this guy is very very uh, good at separating in the short intermediate and the downfield game has that long speed to be able to stretch the field something that we really don't have on this roster can win from the outside and the slot i think this guy has wide receiver three or two capability written all over him like i said has that background with bryce young the only thing on him is the off the field stuff has some issues where he hit a, a female fan after a tennessee game because he was upset he talks a lot of trash during games as well and it can really kind of lose himself in that competitive heat of the battle but this is a guy that i think with the former teammate like bryce with the good coaching staff and some vets in the locker room we can really bring him in and help him kind of hone those skills together and get his mind right and if he puts that thing together i think the sky is the limit for this guy to be an effective weapon for this offense so i love jermaine burton here. next up at pick 141 i went with another tight end Yes, I double dipped on wide receiver with Jermaine Burton is able to get and tight end. I went with Jatavian Sanders first. I'm coming with Jared Wiley now. Jared Wiley is a huge, big body receiving tight end. 6'7", 240 pounds, ran in the four sixes at the combine. Very, very good athleticism for a guy that size. Brings a size and skill set that we don't have anywhere on this offense, but we definitely haven't had at the tight end position here in Carolina. Jared Wiley is a guy that you can split out in the slot. You can put him on the outside. You can put him in line. You can put him as a wing back in the backfield. This guy can really pretty much do it all. And his size it makes him too big for corners and DBs. Put him in the slot. He's too fast to run and running that seam for linebackers. And he's just really, really creative receiver. He reminds me a bit of Jake Ferguson from uh, the Cowboys. You know what I'm saying? A big a frame uh, tight end that can run with speed down the middle of the field and stretch things open over there. And there's a matter of problem to be able to go up and catch passes. Um, doesn't bring a ton after the catch because his contact balance isn't always there, but he can definitely take advantage when there is room available. What he does though is create matchup problems and a chess piece that we can move around and just having a variety of skill sets with a size combination. I think double dipping and revamping our whole tight end room. Um, I know we have a guy uh, like Steven Sullivan who is tall and lanky like that, but I think that Jer Jared Wiley is a way better athlete very very similar frame as steven sullivan and i think he has way better hands and more competitive at the catch point it's time to move on for some of these guys and really revamp this tight end room so i got sanders wiley hubbard um you can keep steven sullivan if you want to but that other guy, he's got to go. But regardless, I like Jared Wiley at 141. And the last pick in my five-round mock draft is pick number 142. And I went with Javon Foster, offensive tackle from the University of Missouri. Now, this guy is not really uh, – he has maybe a pack backup potential with eventual, uh, eventually being able to develop into a rotational piece. And you need a guy that can play that swing tackle. He played left tackle at uh, Missouri and was all-conference uh, back-to-back. But three-year start, I mean – 
the starter two years in a row for the team. And this guy is very, very seasoned. He had been in school since 2018, thanks to red shirt and the COVID year. He's gotten a lot of experience playing at Missouri. I think this is a guy that has very, very long arms. And I just went with the measurables here because we do need to add some more depth to this offensive line room overall and start developing some younger guys. I know we really pay some money in free agency. And we, of course, we have Taylor Moten, who's not going to be around for forever. Um, he's not that old, but he's getting up there. It's time to start bringing some guys along slow that can develop and as rotational pieces we know last year our depth on the offensive line was tested so it's best to start bringing in some guys and really getting them used to the system like i said i think the arm length and the, the grip that he has is really something that I, I it draws me to the guys that play tackle and um, a guy that you can kind of build off on off that and those are things you just can't teach so there you have it i went with a five round mock draft but end up with seven picks thanks to a early trade i think a trade is more likely for the panthers i'll talk about that in a future video but i went all offense just to see what it did it was funny i had to double dip at receiver and tight end but i ended up getting a starting caliber running back a starting receiver a starting center and a guy that uh, tight ends that are going to contribute, make plays right away for us. And, of course, some speed with Jermaine Burton. I really like what I did overall. Let me know what you guys think about this all-offensive draft. I know it's not going to end like this because we need more help. But I want to see how you think I did overall by going all-offense on this time around. But I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down below. Stay up to date with all this Panthers news and updates that I do here on the channel. I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.